Good day from the 65th annual Cannes Film Festival. I'm Ian Roberts, and I'm presenting to you a program created by Paramax and Mund West, a program entitled Con Echo 2012, in partnership with Screen International. In our program, we have a unique opportunity to take a look into the world of film finance. Through a series of interviews and roundtables, we gain valuable insight from the leaders of the film finance industry and how they are bridging the gap between unique storytelling and the financial resources to make them become a big screen cinematic experience. In this edition of our Con Echo series, we had a unique opportunity to sit down with Vinka Jarrett of Film Pro Finance and a number of the few remaining bankers that are still financing films today. Let's take a closer look and listen to what they had to say. Hello, I'm here with Can Echo 2012, the banking panel. My name is Vinka Jarrett. I'm with Film Pro Finance, and we have a great panel discussion for you today. Thank you for coming today. Um, Adrian, I want to know a little bit about how anyone gets to the banks in the first place. How do you qualify to get bank financing on a one-off independent feature film? Good question. Uh, we, we deal almost exclusively with independent film producers who come to us with uh, individual film projects where they are um, putting collateral on the table in the form of pre-sales, which is one of the reasons why we all come to, to Cannes at this time of year. This is where a lot of the pre-sales uh, occur between the different sales companies and the various foreign buy buyers around the world. Um, the producer will also have a, a broader finance package that will probably include tax credits of some form that the bank can also potentially lend against. Um, and we al almost will always be doing some sort of uh, gap financing against the future value of the film in various foreign territories. Um, but we're really looking for producers who've got some sort of a track record, who uh, know the process very well and how to deal with the bank and all the legal and financial aspects of that. Uh, and hopefully they're people that, that throughout that process will work alongside us and vice versa to get the film made. Is China really a hot spot now? It's all we're hearing about in the media is everything is about China and the film business. Are they putting money into films? Are we seeing lots of productions go from around the world to China? Uh, it's a good question. I'm, uh, there's certainly a lot more activity there than there has been. Um, they've they've uh, you know, opened the doors, so to speak, a little bit more to allow more Western um, activity over there, which is definitely a good thing too. There's, there's definitely a number of Chinese companies that are active in providing equity, both in mainly in Chinese films, um, but also outside of China. So we're, you know, I think we're right at the start of a very, you know, what I think will be a long and, and hopefully a positive phase where there's more money, um, more co-production arrangements. Um, it's obviously, you know, even the studios look at that market as something that's very interesting and, and you know, a lot of independence as well. So I think what about, it's starting. What about India? You had spoken a little bit about India being a hot spot for the last few years. Is it still hot? Definitely. I mean, Bollywood is, uh, you know, is a, is a huge market. It's got a long tradition in filmmaking. They haven't always used what, you know, Western types of financing. It's mostly equity financed. But again, there's, you know, as this world grows smaller, there's more crossover, you know, both in terms of the creative elements. You see Bollywood actors now uh, appearing in Western films uh, and a little bit the other way. And uh, again, there's uh, different financing models now that are being used over there that, that leads us and bond companies and other financiers to, to look a lot more closely at that market. Who to be wary of? I'm going to turn that over to Adrian as well. I know it's one of your, your hot topics these days and looking at scams and people that come to you with alleged funding that doesn't pan out. What's happening in that area now? Yeah, well, we, you know, as Charlene was saying, we, we get involved very early on in the process with a filmmaker. And, um, but we're typically financing anywhere between 40 and 80 percent of a budget. So the producer's generally looking for some final equity financing. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are drawn to this business for one reason or another who go around promising that money, but there's very few of them that are actually real. So I, I always um, will, will offer my services to the producer to get on the phone with that equity source and ask a few pointed questions to them about you know whether it is real or not. I do not mind being the bad cop in that position. Um, 
Uh, unfortunately, more times than often, it, it doesn't work out. But, you know, we've developed relationships with real equity sources, and in the right circumstances, we can always put that, our producers on onto them, and hopefully it works out. Walk us through a closing of a financing, Adrian, and tell us how complex it is and how much time it usually would take to do a closing on a typical bank financing. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it tends to vary, and even with the same client, perhaps you, you find yourself in different positions on different films but um, it, it you know it starts with who you're dealing with first and foremost and if it's an experienced producer and he surrounded himself with good uh, lawyers and accountants and things like that then it makes it easier for us uh, there's always unknown factors that seem to come up uh, at the last moment but but again at the collective what, is, group. what are some of the unknown factors that come up well uh, one of the you know some of the things over the years you know you've got you've got you're, you're sort of usually working to a very strict time factor as an actor who's got an availability window and if you don't close the loan in that window he's going to move on to the next project um, sometimes the agents are a little more helpful in those situations sometimes they're not so uh, we, we again it's a process that may take anywhere from two to six weeks we try and make it as painless as possible um, because we just want to get to the point where we're funding the loan and they're making the movie. But um, it's, uh, it, it's usually the result of a lot of groundwork up to that point and that can make it a lot easier. If you're not dealing with issues up to that point and then you have to deal with them uh, and you're up against a time limit, you, you can have problems. Why do you come to Cannes every year? I think it's the, uh, the rosé wine is very good. but. Uh, uh, but no, seriously speaking, it, it, all of the things that have been said already definitely apply. Um, my, my main goal while I'm here is really to, to talk to the foreign buyers. This is where they're all in the same place at the same time, and I'll have as many meetings as I can to find out information about what's going on in Japan and Spain and Latin America, so that when I go back to my office and I'm shut in my four walls, I'm making informed decisions, informed credit decisions, it's also a very good venue to work out problems with you may have with buyers. Peter talked about you know the obviously the, the economic issues around Europe. Um, I'm talking to everybody about that because I want to get ahead of that problem rather than have it occur and then and then you're left to deal with it. So it's just a very good venue to have face-to-face -face meetings as much as emails and Skype calls and everything you know are useful. There's nothing like being in front of someone. What's one piece of advice you would give to? investors in the film industry that were going to involve bank financing for an independent film? Uh, having a great script usually helps you in that process. Um, beyond that, I think, you know, the advice I give to a lot of producers is just be very realistic about uh, what you're going to, you know, how you're going to achieve your goals. Um, but but, but you've got to work hard at it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Can Echo Banking Panel in Can 2012. Panelists, I appreciate your time today. And thank you for participating. Thank you for watching our Con Echo 2012 series.